Okay, so this is a follow-up to the unit circle. Today we're going to be talking about sine and cosine. These are, again, going to be completely based on understanding the unit circle. So I'm going to go ahead and set up another unit circle. We should remember that in the last lesson we learned how to talk about angles, and we also learned how to draw um, points on the circle and figure out their x and y coordinates. So if I pick a specific angle, let me go ahead and throw a line floating out in that direction. Here is a point on the circle that intersects that line. And if I label this angle as theta, normally we would want to talk about the x and the y coordinates. It's a point, so it has an x value and it has a y value. But what we're going to do here is we're going to come up with an entirely new way of describing the point. You're actually going to give me the angle, and I am going to tell you two new functions based on the angle that tell me the values of x and the values of y. The value of x is called cosine theta, and the value of y is called sine of theta. So go ahead and write this down x is the same as cosine of theta, and y is the same as sine of theta. So let's talk about things that we learned last time that we can now upgrade to totally new things now, totally for free, with absolutely no work whatsoever. One of the things we talked about is the equation for the unit circle. x squared plus y squared equals 1. Remember, in the back of your head, you should always have that x is cosine theta and that y is sine theta. So if we replace x and y with cosine theta and sine theta, our new equation, 1a, is going to be cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared equals 1. Now you're going to see it written in a different way. You're going to see cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And the reason that we put the square between cosine and theta and between sine and theta is that if you forget to put parentheses, it doesn't look like you're accidentally squaring the theta. This is less ambiguous. So what we have here is a nice little equation that's equivalent to the original. This is true for every angle. No matter what the angle is, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. This is something that we call a trig identity. What are some other things we can talk about? Remember how we had said that all of our x values are between negative 1 and 1, and our y values are between negative 1 and 1. Again, remember that x is the same thing as cosine theta, and that y is the same thing as sine theta. Right off the bat, that this, this is going to immediately translate into 2a. Negative 1 is less than or equal to cosine of theta, is less than or equal to 1, and negative 1 is less than or equal to sine theta, is less than or equal to 1. So again, since cosine and sine are just new names for the x and the y coordinate of the angle, uh, of where the angle hits the circle, they're going to satisfy all of the equations that were originally satisfied for x and for y. Remember last time we also figured out some points on the circle. Let me go ahead and put up the circle and put up some points. So here's my circle. The first four points that we saw were north, south, east, and west. Remember the values of these points. 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Also remember the angles, 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. So 
If I want to ask you, what are the sine and cosine of pi over 2, it's going to be based on the x and the y values at pi over 2. Let me write cosine of pi over 2 and sine of pi over 2. If we go back and we look at our circle, and we remember that cosine is the x value and sine is the y value, then up here in the land of pi over 2, when we want cosine, all we want is the x value. So we go back and we write that cosine of pi over 2 is 0 because the x value at the angle pi over 2 is 0. Additionally, if we go ahead and we take the y value, and remember that sine of theta is y, then what we're going to get is that sine of pi over 2 has to be 1. Let's go ahead and compute another one. Let's figure out what cosine of pi and sine of pi are. So if we go back to our picture of the circle, and we find pi, and we circle the point that makes pi for us, then what we're going to see is that the x value is negative 1, and the y value is 0. Remember, cosine is the x value, sine is the y value. So when we come back over here, we get that cosine has to be the x value, which is negative 1, and sine has to be the y value, which is 0. Let's go ahead and take another point on the circle, one that we've calculated before. We know that the point here is given by 1 half radical 3 over 2. So here, I don't know what angle this makes. But what I do know is that no matter what angle that is, sine of theta has to be the y value, which is radical 3 over 2, and cosine of theta has to be the x value, which is 1 half. Another thing that we talked about were that, was that there are a lot of angles that end in exactly the same spot. So remember, we said 0 radians is about the same thing as 2 pi radians. We know that 0 and 2 pi are very different numbers. 0 is 0, and 2 pi is about 6.3. But when we talk about the angle, if I tell you to rotate 0 or rotate 2 pi, you end up facing the same direction. This is also the same as 4 pi, which is the same as 6 pi and actually is the same as negative 2 pi, and so on. So, since cosine of theta is just the x value, and sine of theta is just the y value, then if you take the same theta and add 2 pi to it, since you're facing the same direction, you have the same x and y values. So we go ahead and get a totally new thing that we can write which is that cosine of theta is the same as cosine of theta plus 2 pi. We can also say that sine of theta is the same as sine of theta plus 2 pi. It's even bigger than this. These are basic, but we can say that cosine of theta is the same as cosine of theta plus any number of 2 pi's, and that sine of theta is the same as sine of theta plus any number of 2 pi's. Here we have that k is any integer. Now, what you're going to be faced with a lot are trying to solve equations. For example, perhaps we want to know, 
for what theta does sine of theta equal zero. The way you want to think about this is instead of just memorizing all of the values of sine and cosine for a large number of angles, remember that sine theta can be thought of as the y value. So because of that, sine theta equals zero can be transformed into the equation y equals zero. Why is that useful? Well, if I take the unit circle and I graph the line y equals zero, you should remember that the line y equals zero is just a horizontal line. It is the x-axis. And you look on the unit circle for all of the places that the red line intersects. Here's one, and there's one. Those two points satisfy sine theta equals zero. Why? Because this point and this point both have y value equal to zero. What are the angles? Well, this first point over here on the right has angle equal to zero. So for that, theta equals zero. This point over here on the left has theta equal to pi. Now, are those the only values that work? No. What did we see before? We saw that any time we add any amount of 2 pi to, a, to an angle that works, we get another angle that works. So what is 0 plus 2 pi? 2 pi. Pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. We can also subtract 2 pi from anything that works and get something that works. Pi minus 2 pi is negative pi. 0 minus 2 pi is negative 2 pi. And so all of these work. 4 pi, 8 pi, 20 pi, negative 16 pi, tons and tons of answers. Let's go ahead and do one more. Let's solve cosine theta equals negative 1. Remember, our savior here is going to be the fact that cosine theta is the same as x. So we're looking for x equal to negative 1. Go ahead and set up a totally new circle. And draw the line x equals negative 1. That's going to go here. That's x equals negative 1. And let's go ahead and figure out where this intersects. Just like we did here, We're going to go ahead and drop our intersection point. We're going to figure out that this, in fact, is negative 1, 0. And you notice that x equals negative 1. And so the solution to cosine theta equals negative 1 is going to be the angle that lands me there. That angle is pi. Now, remember, we're never totally satisfied if we have just one angle. A lot of angles also work. 3 pi is also going to work. 5 pi is also going to work. So is negative pi and negative 3 pi. Because remember, whenever we have an angle that works, we also have that angle plus 2 pi or minus 2 pi any number of times also works. So that's really all I want to talk about right now. Always remember the following things. How did we define sine and cosine? We defined sine and cosine based on an angle. If you tell me the angle that the line makes with the x-axis, I will tell you that that angle makes cosine and sine the x and y values. So anytime you see x and y, you can think about replacing it with cosine and sine when we're talking about the unit circle. 
Whenever you see cosine and sine, you can think about replacing it with x and y. Here we replaced x and y with cosine and sine because it gave us a new identity. Here we replaced x and y with cosine and sine, and we saw that cosine and sine are bounded by 1 and negative 1. Here we figured out some of the values for sine and cosine for different angles. We talked about the fact that whenever you add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi from any angle, it still gives you the same sine and cosine values. We figured out how to solve some equations. If I ask you to solve sine theta equals 0, all you do is replace sine theta with y, and you figure out where on the circle y equals 0 hits. That's it. Go ahead and do the homework that I'm posting, and I'll see you in class.